welcome today we will be discussing one very specific instrument which we are going to use for hospital okay so in healthcare sector when we handle different uh, kinds of uh, you know manual material like specifically in case of patient handling we, we we normally use this particular tool the name of the tool is mapo manual patient handling operation in hospital so we are trying to understand that when uh, the nurses caregivers you, you know take care of their you know patients in hospital condition then what kind of stress they are facing or they uh, they are you no know, kind of uh, exposure they have the hazardous exposure they have while handling such operation we are going to assess them and we are trying to understand through an index that how stressful it is how complex the situation is and how we can improve it so let's start this particular instrument which is named mapo index so manual handling of disabled patient okay so when we are talking about manual handling of a patient mainly we handle patients who are disabled in terms of movement right so the person either completely not in a position to move himself or herself or some cases are there where they can do some activity however they are not uh, independent enough to do the movement so in that case they need some kind of assessments so one of the major factor which is affecting our while doing such activity to the caregiver is the low back pain suppose i am shifting one person from one bed to wheelchair now when we are uh, shifting the patient we need to be utmost careful about their health condition different kinds of you know uh, instruments are at associated uh, attached to the body of the patient also the patient is very much vulnerable in terms of the pain in terms of you know uh, infection and many other things right so we should be very careful while transferring them from one place to another now if we are handling such kind of patient mostly it happens that our, uh, that our back back the you know the low back is getting exposed towards load handling load in terms of the weight of the patient okay so there we have lot of things uh, you know lot of hazards and risks available we are going to assess them using this particular uh, particular index mostly the nursing staffs are exposed towards this type of scenario and they are mainly the uh, subjects for this kind of uh, this particular instrument or this particular tool okay so mapo are only useful when we are talking about patient handling by the nursing staff at any hospital so what this particular tool is all about it's a movement and assistance of the hospital patient method so m a p o mapo and then it is developed in 1999 so you can understand it's not very old tool it's quite new a practical tool for analyzing and intervention and then going for a prevention strategies to uh, help the nursing staff while handling the patient it also calculate uh, the different types of wards which is available in the hospital and different nursing home so based on the type of ward based on the number of bed it has in a particular ward what is the type of nursing home or hospital it is based on that this index will change and it will in uh, no directs uh, the uh, the observer or direct the intervention person to do the intervention so movement and assistance of hospital patient that is the mapo method it is used for both patient and for the 
caregiver or the hospital nursing staff for both acute and long term patient and for both nurses exposed to the manual patient handling for all these cases we can use mapo index it is not really applicable in case of emergency and accident cases so we cannot uh, use this particular tool in the, that scenario in any case of physiotherapy those cases also it is not applicable this tool is not applicable and it is also not applicable at the operation theater so we can clearly understand this mapo index is only applicable for the nurses or nursing staff who are handling the patient at regular basis at the different wards of any hospital not at the emergency situation not at the operation theater neither on the uh, for the physiotherapy section okay so these are the cases where we can so it's a very clear cut indication where you can use the mapo index where you cannot use the mapo index if you go by the exact identification you need to understand when a person is shifting some patient from one place to another place in a regular activity then only this mapo is applicable now may you may uh, ask a question why not at emergency sector because uh, it is not applicable because the kind of stress and tension that the you know necessity of the emergency section uh, sector are very high right for those cases you really cannot uh, use this particular uh, tool it is a regular tool where you have specific duties to be performed there is no hodgepodge it's like very streamlined process so you need to move the patient from bed to washroom bed to for a checkup bed uh, or from uh, no when somebody uh, doctor is coming to uh, to get go for a visit or maybe when a patient is there for a long time maybe you are take the uh, caregiver or the nursing staff is taking them for a round so for all those cases where it's a normal day to day uh, regular activities at different wards of the hospital so uh, when we talk about this particular tool or particular technique you need to understand this is uh, need to be done in a step by step so you have to identify the general aspect general feature of the calculation model it has a typical calculation process because we are talking about an index right so you need to calculate it and once you cal get the index you have to go for the classification of the index so slowly we will go for the each step in detail when we are talking about general aspect we need to understand that we have varieties of factors involved in this particular uh, general aspect very first thing is that what is your patient quality is the patient is completely non cooperative that means the patient uh, is not in a position to move at all by himself or herself there will be no assistance given from the patient side so the nursing staff have to take care everything so each and every movement need to be taken care by the nursing staff so that type of patient will be categorizing as non cooperative patient in some other cases where patient has some kind of movement he or she is in position with some kind of help can move himself or herself okay so maybe there is some difficulties in whole movement but he or she can manage partially so that is the partially cooperative patient okay so 
uh, one is non cooperative patient another is partially cooperative patient so before we start any kind of investigation from the mapo uh, perspective you need to categorize how many patients are there and what is their category are they how many of them are non cooperative how many are uh, are there who are partially cooperative the second part is lifting factor we will be discussing how do we calculate it then minor aids factor then wheelchair factor because you are going we are talking about the movement right from one place to another patient handling right so wheelchair is very important factor in this particular uh, index then environmental factor and training factor so if somebody is trained enough then there is um, less chance of difficulties faced by the person if they are uh, he or she is not trained to handle patient definitely they are going to get lot of trouble right so training factor is very important in case of mapo so in total we have total 6 factors which are going to give you the impact or which you are going to get from the for the index we are going to calculate each of them it is necessary to identify all these uh, factors as well what are those patient care load produced by the presence of disabled patient type and degree of motor disability of that particular patient structural aspect of the working environments and the wards whatever the equipments are installed within that particular sector and training of the staff on that particular specific topic okay these are also need to be taken care so to calculate the mapo index we need to use the data recording worksheet we are going to show you in next few slides and this worksheet will contain two major aspect that is the part 1 and part 2 part 1 will contain the interview with a head nurse and all collects all information concerning the organizational and training aspect second part of that particular form will have an on site inspection and it is designed to facilitate the analysis of the environment and equipment aspect and assess the specific subsidiary maneuver so these are the two major part that is available in that particular worksheet we are going to discuss that worksheet in next slides so when we are talking about disabled patient in terms of disabled patient and operator ratio okay so how many disabled patients are there they are cooperative no co partially cooperative or no co non cooperative and how many people are there who are going to help them so that means the nursing staff so number or type of workers and operators employed in that particular unit this information need to be collected in the form number assigned to manual patient handling how many people are involved in the manual patient handling these all are divided into three shift like you know shift 1 shift 2 and shift 3 type of patient usually enco encountered in the manual handling so what type what is the types of patient so non cooperative or partially cooperative so if we have all these information with us then we can get a ratio which will describe the non cooperative patient divided by the number of people available to handle them and partially cooperative patient uh, and the uh, divided by the number of people to handle them so this ratio you will be getting in this particular section so that is the disabled patient divided by the operator ratio okay disabled patient and operator ratio that we are going to get in this particular section so it is necessary to know the average number of disabled patient present in that particular unit so as i mentioned non cooperative and partially cooperative 
and are non-cooperative, unable to use the upper and uh, lower limb both and has to be fully lifted in a uh, no, transfer operation. So, it is not that partially they are doing it. You need to move completely from one place to another shifting. Okay. In case of partially, only partially lifted has uh, uh, no residual uh, motor capacity. So, that is the categorization. The choice of this division is divided from the evidence indicating a different biomechanical overload on the lumbar spine. So, this particular category has uh, some connection with this biomechanical overload on the lumbar spine. Okay? This way we are going to get the ratio of disabled person who are present in that particular ward and the operator who are going to handle them. Now coming to lifting factor. Once we are sure that how many people are present and uh, to be operated and how many staff are there who are going to handle them. Once that is done, then we are going to understand the lifting factor. All we are going to calculate in the worksheet as an example in the next, uh, uh, no, oh, in the next uh, part of your presentation. So, assessment of the patient lifting index, uh, lifting factor consists of two aspects. One is a sufficient number compared with a total number of non-cooperative patient and their adequacy compared with the need of that particular unit. Here, the sufficient number is the presence of one lifting device for every eight totally non-cooperative patient. So, this definition you have to remember. Okay? The presence of one lifting device for every eight totally non-cooperative patient. If it is there, then you will say it is sufficient. Whereas, if it is inadequate, what is the definition? The adequacy compared with the need of the unit con, uh, no, considered cannot be used for the type of patient normally present in that particular department is in a poor state of repair. So, sometimes it is broken. So, you need to take care of it and cannot be used due to environmental features of the wards or that particular bathroom that they are going to use. So, for these cases also you need to give a consideration. right? So, that is for the lifting factor. Now, what else? The value of the lifting factor will vary from 0.5 to 4. How we are going to calculate the lifting factor? We will discuss it. Based on the feature of the sufficient number and or adequacy what is described above and non-cooperative patient is usually moved at least 4 times per day. In a day, the person the non-cooperative uh, person need to be moved for uh, four times per day and the maximum obtained score for this particular parameter that is the lifting factor will be four. So, what is this? This is the table that you can go for the as, uh, no, lifting factor. Absence or inadequate uh, and the insufficient, so it is value is four insufficient and or inadequate anyone here it is insufficient means number is not available also whatever is available that is not adequate in that case it is 4 here it is either insufficient or inadequate okay anyone then it is 2 and sufficient and adequate then it is 0.5 so you need to check what is the status of the lifting factor in that particular ward or in that particular uh, hospital. If you are doing it for whole hospital, then you need to do or if you are doing it only specifically for a ward, you need to check. So, you need to understand what is absent or inadequate and then insufficient. That means, if number of 
equipment which is required is not available as per the requirement that means it is inadequate whereas insufficient means you have things but they are not up to the mark okay so that if both the combinations are present then it is 4 if any one of them is present then it is 2 if none of them is present then it is 0.5 now minor aids factor so once you you understood how you are lifting then what are the aiding factors okay so of course you have some if you have some mechanical aid or no some helping aid definitely it is going to reduce the stress level right reduce the impact level so we are going to consider that so reduces the number uh, the overload pro, uh, whatever is producing by the certain operation to partially move the weight of the patient okay so if you have sliding sheet then you have some advantage if you have transferred this definitely you have an advantage if you have roller or some kind of ergonomic belt then definitely these are some kind of advantages right so a reducing value of 0.5 is assigned to the relative factor considering that the presence of these aid will reduce the number whatever you have get you got from the lifting factor of this said operation so the value is one when minor aids are not assigned so if you have eight then 0.5 if you do not have eight then it is one okay coming to wheelchair because that is the major factor involved here so consider two aspect in an uh, integrated manner First is the sufficient number compared with the number of disabled patient. Do you have sufficient number of wheelchair or not? And the presence of the ergonomic requirement in that particular wheelchair. One is sufficient number is present or not or whatever is there, is it adequate or not? Okay. So, sufficient number is equal to how do you calculate the sufficient number the presence of sufficient number of wheelchair equal to at least half of the disabled patient in that particular unit okay so suppose you have 10 disabled patient in your unit so you need at least five numbers of wheelchair in your unit to handle all these 10 patient now, if you have only four chair, four wheelchairs, then definitely it is insufficient. Okay, so this is how we are going to calculate the sufficiency or insufficiency. Then is the assessment of the ergonomic requirement is made by the assigning value of one to each type of wheelchair for presence of the following feature. So, if you have this particular feature that is the armrest uh, you know, which should be removable so if that feature is there then it is one okay backrest which is uh, which should not be cumbersome then it is one if it is cumbersome then no okay then equipped with a reliable break then it is plus one and then width which should not be exceeded for 70 centimeter then also one so these are the ergonomics feature that you are going to check for the existing wheelchair first is it is sufficient or not so number is sufficient or not and then you are going to check is it adequate or not so maybe you have 10 patient your number of available wheelchair is 4 so first you identified it is insufficient okay and then you have among these 4 2 are having all these 4 features whereas 2 are not having all these 4 features so some are adequate some are not adequate so how do we calculate the wheelchair factor that we are going to test in the next slide from the sum of the inadequacy score for each type of wheelchair multiplied by the number of 
wheelchairs. The total score of each type of wheelchair is need to be obtained. Okay, so that we are going to get. And from the sum of various column score divided by the total number of wheelchair, the mean wheelchair score will be obtained. It is an assessment of the ergonomic suitability 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 of all wheelchairs present in that particular unit. So, how you are going to get that? So, you know if m uh, this mean wheelchair score is if 0 to uh, 1.33 and numerically if it is sufficient then value is this, if it is numerically not sufficient then value is this. If your score is lying between here and it is numerically sufficient then value is this, if it is numerically not sufficient then it is similarly for this range. So, you may have a figure of wheelchair factor ranging from here either from this range from this range or from this range and once you have this range established then you need to check it is sufficient or not if it is sufficient then you go for this es column if it is not sufficient then you go for the no column and you get the value of wheelchair factor now coming to environmental factor Three sections are considered in this particular factor. One is bathroom because that is the major area where you are going to transfer your patient. Second is toilet and then third is the within world. For each section a number of inadequacy feature with we need to score it. The highest score that is 1 or 2 will be assigned to the environmental aspect that is that if inadequate oblige the operators to perform a greater number of patient transfer maneuver. Okay? And the lowest score that is the 0.5 will be assigned to the presence of uh, furniture that prevents the partially cooperative patient from using the uh, residual motor capacity. So, calculating the mean score that is the uh, environmental score inadequacy of each section that is the MSB for bathroom, MST for toilet and MSW for word. So, you have uh, mean score for bathroom, mean score for toilet and mean score for word. You have different score for this environmental factor. Now, once you have this environmental factor, you can see here for bathroom, you have three variety. For toilets, you have 4, 5 and then for words you have 5. So, you have the scores given here right. From here you can refer to your worksheet ok. Now, we will see how do we read them. Now, coming to further in environmental factor the sum of the mean score. So, from bathroom plus your toilet plus your word ok. So, the sum of the mean score of the three section constitute the mean environmental score or MSE and it is divided into three major category that is low, average and high and uh, you know environmental factor value is this. So, you have first the uh, no uh, ranges that you are going to get and from there you are going to get this particular factor environmental factor. So, we have wheelchair factor, we have uh, the factor coming from the number of people available there and the number of people available to operate to them. So, that particular factor then you have environmental factor also we have taken consideration about the kind of minor aids uh, available to handle the patient ok. Next factor is the training factor. So, if you have 
good training, uh, then you are uh, safe enough to handle the patient. Whereas, if you do not have training, you are going to expose yourself to a hazardous situation. So, training is very important. So, we need to give a rating to the training as well. So, the efficacy of training based on the following feature we need to identify. So, training course lasting for 6 hours, a theoretical section and a practical exercise. Uh, uh, in practical exercise, the technique for partially lifting patient that produce the least overload okay? and the practical exercise on the correct use of the equipment. It is not only the what you are handling, also how you are handling. Okay. So, patient definitely cooperative, non-cooperative, these are the types, what is the load limit, all these are there. But how you are handling is also an important factor. A reducing value of 0.75 is assigned to the case of adequate training. Okay. So, if you have adequate training, then you need to assign a reducing value of 0.75. Where training is limited simply to giving information, no significant reduction is observed in the number of movement producing overload, a training factor need to be given as 1. Where no type of training is given, suppose training is given but there is no impact then it is 1 and if there is no training, the frequency severity of the overloading movement is doubled then the training factor will be assigned as 2. Okay? So, training also has some category. So, if it is effective then 0.75, if training is there it is not that effective then 1, if it is training is not at all there and it is you know, showing the overload then it is definitely the value will be double. So, it is 2. Now, how do we calculate? So, uh, MAPO synthetic exposure index will be calculated as MAPO is equal to non-cooperative patient divided by number of people available there multiplied by lifting factor. Okay? This is one portion plus partially cooperative patient divided by the number of people available there multiplied by all the AF asymmetry factor. Okay? Then multiplied by wheelchair factor then EF the, that is the environmental factor and the TF that is the uh, training factor. The lifting uh, this whole thing that ratio of non-cooperative by the operator and co partially cooperative and the operator are weighted with the respect of the lifting and the minor aids aspect. In order to assess the potential biomechanical overload produced by the transfer operation according to the presence or absence of and the suitability of their aids under this study that you need to assess. The other factor like you know wheelchair factor, environmental factor, training factor they will be act as an multiplier of the general exposure level. So, major component is coming from this particular sector whereas these are the impacting factor. An overload in manual patient handling operation can be, uh, uh, can be evaluated through this particular formula. Okay? And once we have any index definitely we need to compare with some kind of value. So, this is the level how you can compare. So, if you have a MAPO index value which is lying between this particular sector then it is negligible. If it is here then it is medium. If it is more than 5 then you need to be very careful definitely there is something wrong in the whole situation and you need some kind of intervention immediately and this is the de definition of each sector. So, negligible the prevalence of low back pain appears identical, uh, medium the low back pain is 2.5 times higher than the green level and uh, high it is uh, 
5.6 times higher than the green level. So, the here is some kind of gradation present in this uh, according to this color. Okay. Now, how do we collect data? So, this is the uh, pro forma that is given uh, by the author. What you need to do? This is this is an example that we are going to discuss. Uh, no further slides uh, where we are going to really calculate the map. Okay, so here you need to give the detail about the hospital uh, which unit where you are going to collect your data. So that is the unit here. For example, we have done the analysis at the medicine sector. Then total number of staff. So, these all you will get from the discussion that is the part 1 of this particular sector. Okay. So, you are going to get the information. So, the number total number of staff engaged on patient transfer over 3 shift. So, here you can see that morning shift we have 4 staff, afternoon shift we have 3 and night shift we have Two. So, we have total 9 operator in that medicine world. Okay. Now, once we know how many number of people are there to operate, then what you are going to do? You are going to understand who are the people going to get, uh, you know, handle. So, number of patient. From this, you can understand you have total 22 disabled patient. Whereas, non-cooperative number of non-cooperative patient is 16 and cooperative partially cooperative patient is 6. Also, you need to see that which manual patient train, uh, transfer operation are to be done. So, uh, bed to wheelchair, bed to trolley and something need to be done in other case. So, these are the varieties of operation that they are going to do in this particular sector. So, uh, you need to note down the name of the hospital as I mentioned here we have taken the medicine as an unit and these are the uh, information we have collected from the above state. So, tools um, for transfer the patient we had wheelchair, bed wheelchair and bed trolley and some other small equipment. Okay, this is the basic information you are going to collect from the first part of your data collection sheet. Now, let us move to the next part where we are going to uh, understand the type of wheelchair or the commode that we have. Okay. So, here we are going to uh, calculate the uh, wheelchair score, main score. Now, how we are going to collect? See, we can have a, B, C, D, E, F, G varieties of situation. Okay. So, that that is uniform throughout this particular tool. You can see for each section for wheelchair factor, for lifting factor, for um, uh, environmental factor, you have such cases. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. These are the things. If you have more than that, you repeat. Okay. So, here what is mentioned here? The features and inadequacy score of the wheelchair and or the commodes present here. Okay. So, you have these val values, the poor maintenance, malfunctioning brake, uh, armrest not extractable. If, if armrest there, but it is not extractable, extractable. So, it is very difficult someone to put inside, right? Footrest, and it is not extra extractable, backrest is cumbersome and width is exceeding 70 centimeter. Okay. So, you have these value. Now, when we are talking about the number of wheelchairs, so let us go back uh, in our earlier slide that number of wheelchairs present, right. So, here what we are going to see we have something three number of wheelchair where you have brake problem in one and uh, backrest combustion in one. So, here you have one plus one that is the two, two multiplied by the number of wheelchair present here. So, three total is six. So, that is the value. Okay. 
that is the one category of wheelchair. In second category of wheelchair, more problem. What is that? It is malfunctioning brake, armrest is not extractable, uh, backrest is also little cumbersome and uh, width is ex exceeding uh, no, 70 centimeter. So, 1 plus 1 plus plant 1 plus 1. So, total value is 4. Whereas, such number of wheelchair is only 1. So, multiplied by 1 is equal to 4. This is the value. Okay. You have 3 wheelchair which is fully functional. Okay. No problem. So, that means value is 0. 0 multiplied by 3 value is 0. Whereas, you have another set of wheelchairs which is um, number is 3 and you have 3 problematic area. So, 3 multiplied by 3 value is 9. Okay. So, you have 4 number of total number of wheelchairs are 10 whereas, you have 4 categories. In one category, the value is 6, another category 4 third category is 0 and sixth category is 9. So, total score becomes 19. Then what is the wheelchair mean score of the wheelchair? 19 divided by 10 that is 1.9 that is the mean score for wheelchair. Now, here question is are wheelchairs sufficient in number or not? Now, we need to remember what is the definition of sufficiency. If you have 10 number of patient and you have 50 percent of that like 5 number of wheelchair then it is sufficient. If it is less than that it is not sufficient. So, 50 percent availability of wheelchair. So, what was our total number of patient? Our total number of patient in this particular case was 22, right? So, 16 plus 6, 22. So, technically, if we want sufficient number of wheelchair, it should be 11. Here, we have how many? 10. So, definitely, we have insufficient number of wheelchairs, right? So, let us see this. Okay. So, we have insufficient number of wheelchairs. So, we have given uh, value is uh, no, we, we do not have sufficient. So, score is 1.9 and we do not have sufficient number of wheelchair. So, this is about wheelchair. Now, let us move to the next uh, portion that is the lifting device. So, manual number 1 and uh, manual uh, lifting device you have one and some is there as electrical that is the number of you have two device ok. So, our lifting device normally is used yes here in this particular case it is yes ok. If no then why? So, always it is not used some cases it is used if also it is used mainly the electric type it is being used. So, these are the information you are collecting and mostly we are not using why not suitable for the units requirement and sometimes it is mostly it is broken. So, that is why we are not using. Are manual patient lifting operators completely eliminated by the use of lifting device? Okay. In this particular cases answer is no. Is there any other uh, aids available here answer is we have one roller ok and for which the operators are these aids used mainly from the bed wheelchair transfer we are using this type of roller not for other cases right bed to trolley or uh, for other cases or moving bed we are not using only from bed to wheelchair transfer this roller is being used. So, this is the information available for associate aids ok. What we are going to do with this we will see later. Now, coming to the next factor that is the environment right. We have how many factors in environment? We have three factors one for bathroom, one for toilet and one for ward right. 
you have three factors. So, first discuss the bathroom factors. Here you have all these features, okay. What is free space is inadequate for the use of the aids, door opening inward, inward not the outward, no shower, no fixed bath, door widths uh, are less than 85 centimeter, non removable removable some obstacle and columns uh, then you are going to get this column score right. Now here also same one uh, case 1, case 2, case 3 like that you have the cases ok. How many total number of bathrooms you have? You have total 3 numbers of bathroom. How they are divided? Category 1 is 1 and category 2 you have 2 numbers of bathroom. What is the problem? You have issues in a uh, first category that is the free space is inadequate and door widths are less than 85 centimeter and non removable obstacle. So, you have 1, 2, 3. So, 3 multiplied by 1 the value is 3 right. Whereas, here you have 1, 1. So, 2, 1 plus 1, 2, 2 multiplied by, by number of uh, bathroom present. So, it is 2 then you get the value 4 right. So, total is 3 plus 4 is 7. So, 7 uh, what you are total score uh, of bathroom divided by total number of bathroom 7 divided by 3 the value is this that is the mean score of bathroom. Similarly, we need to calculate the toilet score ok. Here you can see you have 8 western commode, you have 2 major category in category A you have 1, in category B you have 7. Here the value is 3 and here the value is 28. So, total value is 31. Similarly, we calculate the 31 divided by 8 and the value is 3.87 right. So, this is the mean toilet score fine. We have a uh, type of words same case same uh, same. So, how many number of word you have number 2, number 8 and how many. So, that here you can see that how many number and in that uh, how many beds are beds are available ok. So, that accordingly you can categorize them here we have only uh, 10 words that you are going to uh, discuss. So, here it is 2 plus 8 is total 10. Uh, although there is number of beds mentioned it does not have any impact in case of calculation. Here are the features available how you are going to calculate the um, type of word based on that the total um, no, um, uh, word score ok. So, these features are available here. Here you can see in the first category you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 4 score, score 4 multiplied by you have 2 number of word. So, you have value 8. Here you have 1, 2, 2 values and you have total 8 words. So, value is 16 right. So, 8 plus 16 is 24, 24 divided by 10 it is almost 2.8. 4 it is not 2.5 it is 2.4 ok it is not 5 huh? it is 4. So, this is how you calculate the toilet score. Now, you had bathroom score you have uh, toilet score and you have word score right you add them and you get the mean environment score you get mean environment score ok. Now, what you need to do extra here? So, please you have to presence of the height adjustable beds if you have yes, if you do not have then no and uh, then more category that with uh, three section manual or electric how do you do that right 
and the staff training manual handling. So, here in that case it is not given. So, value is 2, right? We mentioned if included training then 0.75, if it is there but not fully then 1, if it is not at all there then value is 2, right? So, in this particular situation or in this particular case the value was 2. So, let us see how do we get the analysis, okay? So, number of disabled patient by the operators ratio, here you can see the non-cooperative and the operator ratio is 1.77, whereas uh, partially cooperative patient and the operator the value is 0.66, right? So, lifting device factor you have no different uh, section 4, 2 and 0.5. So, you what we have in this particular case that is the inadequate and insufficient, right? So, here we will get the value 2, right? Then minor aids factor like if you have some kind of additional, we had some kind of roller, right? Roller which is going to help us from moving from bed to the wheelchair. That is why the value is 1, that is the minor aid factor. In case of wheelchair, uh, what we had, our value was as per I remember our value was for wheelchair, let us uh, remember, yes, 1.9, right? So, if it is 1.9, that means we are lying in this particular region, 1.9 and uh, the number of wheelchair definitely was not sufficient. We had total 10 numbers of wheelchair and the number of patient was 22. So, technically we should need 11 wheelchairs whereas we have 10. So, the value is this particular case, right? 1.5. Environmental factor, we added them and it became uh, this particular case that is the value of 1.5, okay? So, this particular section, okay? And the training factor, as I said, it is no, that is the information given by this particular section. So, value is 2. So, we have all these factors with us. Now, let us multiply them. So, we, we get some value after multiplying. So, this is the uh, lifting uh, factor multiplied by the uh, ratio of non-cooperative patient by uh, and the operator and then plus the partially cooperative patient and the operator. So, this is the value and then you multiply with uh, wheelchair factor, uh, environmental factor and training factor. Finally, we get a value of 15.75. You can really understand this is very, very high. So, the risk in this particular sector is quite high. It is 5.6 times higher than this green zone, right? So, as I said, we need to do some kind of intervention immediately by seeing this value. Either you increase the number of wheelchair or you increase the status of the wheelchair, you increase the number of the operator, you increase or you improve the st uh, situation of the bathroom, then toilets and the you know uh, words like difference between the two, uh, two bed to the other. So, layout and everything or you give them better training to handle the situation for by doing all these factors or all this uh, improvement you can reduce this particular value that is the 15.75 and then you can say yes you have done the intervention correctly if the value reduces and come back to this level then it is safe to work if it is not then you need to keep on working till it is coming down Okay, that is how you are going to use this MAPO index for evaluating or assessing the manual handling or manual patient handling at the hospital. Good. 
So, this is how you should use them. So, as a protocol, let us understand what are the advantages of this particular tool. This particular tool allows the identification of three action levels in accordance with the well known traffic uh, light model that is the green yellow red which is a great practical value okay and provides detailed analysis of the main risk determinants for low back pain in nurses it facilitates comparison of different words uh, word to word comparison you can do also it allows pre and post intervention plan comparison thus making it possible to simulate the different types of intervention and also it enables simple and quick analysis right. So, these are the advantages there are some disadvantages. So, MAPO is not an individual index but represents a risk level of the analyzed word. MAPO is not applicable in emergency word as I mentioned earlier. In some specific situation, it is possible to have a residual risk when MAPO value is under 1.5 and the environmental factors does not consider the ergonomic features in the bed only for the wheelchairs it is being used. Sometimes in nursing homes, the values of the wheelchair factor is adequate. However, uh, beds are not adequate. So, for those cases it is little conflicting. So, the MAPO method requires uh, on the whole 12 hours uh, training time a follow up of training efficacy, efficacy for 4 hours is highly recommended and it takes about 45 minutes to collect the data and for that uh, you can analyze at the your laboratory. Okay? What uh, instrument you need? You need pen, paper, tape measurement to uh, find out the distances and the width and all those things. Also, you need the worksheet, MAPO worksheet, okay. MAPO worksheet will help you to get the index correctly. So, that is all for MAPO. I suggest you go any one of the nearest hospital and try to uh, get permission to uh, do the study and practice it at your own that how this particular tool is effective in your case. Okay, that's all. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.